Hey guys, uh, tonight we're going to work our way through another batch of uh, viewer submissions. So first up is the Direct Action Spitfire Mark II. Uh, it's a Polish company. I've been following them on Instagram for a while. They've got a lot of interesting designs. Uh, however, being from Europe or Poland or however you want to look at it, uh, it's kind of all the same. Uh, at least as far as my concerns go is um, shipping is astronomical. So... Uh, to get these things and check them out is essentially off the table, which is kind of a shame because like Spitfire, or not Spitfire, but Direct Action and um, I think Hussar, or however you say it, is another one that I'm, I'm pretty interested in. But just, you know, getting hands on them uh, to figure out whether they're crap or not is difficult. Uh, so now that uh, somebody stateside had one of these, I kind of asked if I could borrow it and they agreed without question, which was awesome. Uh, so shout out to that guy. Um, initial glance, I think quality is fine, but we'll we'll take a look at it and run through the features of this uh, on the table. The the front bag and the rear bag are, are disassembled. You guys won't lose any value there. Uh, we'll go through them side by side and uh, show you my thoughts and any concerns that come up. So thanks. All right, so looking at the Direct Action Spitfire Mark II. Um, the, the whole reason I got this thing in the first place is, uh, the viewer asked me if I knew if it was cry back panel compatible and I didn't, uh, I said, you're welcome to send it my way and I'll check just kind of jokingly. Uh, and he took me up on it, but he also reached out to direct action and asked them and the Mark II is a uh, cry back panel compatible. So this is the, the gray ghost panel, which at this point we all know is cry compatible. This is a medium uh, Spitfire, and the, the one size fits all Grey Ghosts, and it fits uh, just fine. I have no no concerns that a cry panel would fit. Um, I guess I forgot. This, this has to be a thing now, although this isn't a cry panel, so the overhang doesn't really matter. But uh, it's pretty flush. Very, very little overhang. All right, so the zippers are nice and concealed by this uh, kind of laser-cut ribbon here. It's not... I mean, it is a separate piece, but it's really, it's not. It's not like some, some ribbon webbing or anything. It's part of the, the plate bag. Um, so it conceals the zippers nicely, I guess helps protect them. Uh, more so helps prevent any kind of snag on uh, the zipper and keeps it from, from disengaging. All right, so with that out of the way, we can look at the, the rear plate bag here. Uh, you can see that ribbon runs full length and, and protects the zipper. If you're not using a back panel on here, your zipper is pretty well protected. So you throw a ruck on it or something like that. Uh, you don't, you're, if you had a concern about losing teeth on your zipper, uh, it should be lessened, I guess. Uh, and easy enough to access, but it still provides some sort of security to keep the zipper from disengaging. Your cummerbund routes under under that ribbon and then a reinforced backer uh, underneath the zipper. So you have a good uh, portion of access here that we got four inch cummerbund over here. I'll show you in a little bit. So you've got at least four inch of pass through there uh, for your, your Velcro style uh, cummerbunds, which I think I've been calling Pharaoh style, probably wrongly, but that's what I've been doing. Uh, as far as the, the back panel goes, you do have uh, a single row of webbing up top here cut into the material uh, so you can provide some redundant uh, security on the back panel which I, I encourage especially up top the bottom is kind of take it or leave it on back panels in my opinion depending on what you're carrying on the back panel uh, but it's nice that it has that there so that it can engage with uh, the molly on the back panel all right uh, on the sides of the bag you've got these little uh, webbing retainers here. You're not going to fit too much in there, but like a Harris 152 uh, whip antenna would fit fine, I believe, uh, and it would keep it nice and rigid against the side of the plate bag if you had an uh, antenna relocator. There's not really a way to secure it on the bottom. You'd probably have to get creative with some, some rubber banding around the webbing here uh, to keep that in place. But with that said, there is kind of a pass through on the, the plate pocket here. Uh, so you could run your uh, antenna remote cable 
down through the plate bag and out the bottom here and then back up with the antenna on there. So it could be a fairly clean setup. You would just need to secure it at the bottom somehow. Otherwise your antenna is just gonna fall out. I've had that happen a bunch of times and it's super annoying. Uh, up top, it's all, you know, kind of one piece construction here. Uh, your your rear uh, shoulder, shoulder strap attachment is sewn in essentially to the plate bag uh, through the wonders of laser cutting. Uh, so it's a nice continuous piece and then box stitch there. Uh, looking at the inside of the plate bag, you've got a loop type material here. It's really very felty. I don't know how well hook would stick to it. We can try it out here. Hook would stick well enough. Um, so you could put pontoons or something in there if that's what you wanted or uh, the armor vent type stuff. Granted, armor vent wants hook, so you'd have to solve that solution, that issue there. Uh, you've got medium ESAPIs and backers in here, and you can see they hang out on the bottom a little bit, but the way the plate bag secures, you've got loop Velcro uh, on your flap, so you don't have any exposed hook, which I do think also means that it's not going to play well with uh, most of the danglers out there. Uh, I'd have to double check on that, but I think most of the time the plate bag is the hook, and then internal is the loop. Uh, but it is a nice long uh, flap here. So even though you've got that much loop hanging out, you really don't have any, any concerns with uh, continuity there. You can see there's a good bit of overlap. Along the bottom of the plate bag, you've got some, some molly webbing cut in there so you can have some horizontally mounted pouches or some arts and crafts for tourniquets or whatever you want to hang down there. I don't get super big on that, uh, so I'm sure there's more possibilities than I'm aware of. Looking internal on the plate bag here. Uh, you can see they, they cleaned everything up pretty nice. Uh, you've got your, your hook Velcro there, uh, stretch panel on the, the plate bag. Uh, so it should breathe fairly well, as well as accommodate uh, some goofy sized plates without too much question. Uh, really, the only issue with the, the ESAPIs there was height, uh, and that may just come from the backers, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see what we got. We got some quality control tags here and i don't know part number or something uh nothing else really to write home about inside the plate bag you can see it's it's pretty simple in there uh so you've got your your kind of all the business piece laser cut with some velcro on top of it i'm not really sure why they put a grommet in there uh i don't know maybe that plays well with something else they have uh and then your stretch panel sewn in there so that's the the rear bag you do have a nice built-in drag handle uh, which has kind of been laser cut and, and sewn in there. I don't know how resilient that would be. Um, but if you can grab a shoulder strap, grab a shoulder strap, and, and that should solve most of your problems. All right, so we get the rear bag out of the way. And you can see uh, made in Poland there. Maybe, maybe you can read that. I don't know. It's made in Poland. Uh, front bag is not uh, as sloppy as it seems. I've just got one of the P210s in there, so it's easier to move around. Uh, so you've got nice laser cut uh, bib portion here, so you mount your end user devices or, and what have you. And then a zippered admin pouch, uh, which doesn't run very deep. Runs to the, the top of this Velcro here. There's no organization in there. It's just uh, lined with packed cloth which isn't a huge deal, not my personal preference, but I get it, whatever. It adds cost and time and complexity. I'm not a huge fan of sewn-in zippers on uh, admin pockets. They just restrict the opening a lot. I don't know. The axle one, for whatever reason, because it's mounted in there with Velcro and, and not part of the, the plate bag, seems to work pretty well. Uh, but like this and the Armatus 2 and, and whatnot, when you have the zipper sewn into everything else, it just is a little restrictive, especially when it's this narrow. Uh, you've got a webbing loop here, so you could mount your push to talks if you wanted to. Uh, if you don't have an end user device, obviously you can mount it to Molly. Uh, you've got a similar routing uh, webbing piece there. So you can wrangle some comms wires at least a little bit. Uh, you do. You also have uh, holes cut into the sides of the plate bag. I was looking at these earlier, 
And I don't know what you would use those for other than potentially some, some cable management. Uh, I don't know how it would possibly tie into anything else. Um, but I guess if you wanted to do like a, a one band cummerbund, you could improvise and just run it through the plate bag and have a buckle on each side and then run that to the back. I would I'd have to be a custom job, I believe. Not that it would be a hard one. You could do it just off the shelf uh, with burning the ends of some webbing and stuff, but it would have to be homemade. Uh, you've got one inch side release buckles uh, for your, your placard compatibility here. Uh, and then they're protected by this little elasticized piece here. Uh, you also have uh, some, some molly cuts running underneath there. Uh, so you could use that for some further push to talk mounting if you didn't need uh, side release buckles. Uh, shoulder straps coming up are fold over design. So it's a single piece coming off of the front plate bag. And you open it up, run it through the rear bag, and then secure it back on itself. I like that they didn't split the hook and the loop 50 50. So you have room for adjustment there. If you need some, if you got some jar, jar, gigantic chest or whatever you can you can just close it like that and then if you're a normal human being and you want to tighten it up a little bit uh, you can pull it down further you could go further if you wanted you just start losing your hook continuity there and uh, have some excess strap hanging off there uh, looking at the shoulder straps a little bit more you've got more routing I'm a big fan of that especially sewn in uh, to the straps and then some more of that kind of felt like material underneath so you could stick some pads if you wanted to. I'm not quite sure what the little overhanging ribbon piece is here. Uh, cause it's not, I mean, it, it's kind of hollow, but it's not of enough size to, to matter. I don't know. It's part of the construction, I guess, left over. Uh, and then on top of the strap, you've got some elastic as well as some kind of hidden molly routing there. So if you were feeling really squirrely and, and frankly dumb, you could put your push tuck up here if you wanted. Uh, but you could use it for cable routing for sure. Uh, I don't know if you could get it to play with G-hooks successfully. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, in all honesty, with this being kind of sewn in, and I don't think these are repair buckles... Uh, are they? Yep, they're repair buckles. All right, either way, with the mounting uh, spot kind of being fixed and like no aftermarket support for these things, I would probably just go ahead and source my placards from Direct Action too. Uh, but you may not like them, that's fine, whatever. Uh, internal is the same as the rear bag with the pontoon uh, capability there. And then again, the molly along the bottom. All right. And then the gentleman that I borrowed this from sent me two cummerbunds. Uh, this one, nothing to write home about, uh, but it's a fairly straightforward elastic cummerbund. No big deal. It's got a nice pull tab on it so you can get it off on the front end. Uh, and then the Velcro area is fairly small, um, but that does give you a lot of room for adjustment, both in height so you can get your rear bag where it needs to be, as well as depth. Um, you could butt these all the way up to each other and, and really suck up a lot of uh, length on there if you needed to. And it is, I believe I saw it. No, it's not gonna do it. It's single piece elastic. I thought I saw it split there like it was double, but it is single elastic there. Uh, so not overly strong, but that's fine. If you're running a light load, that might work for you. And then, Kind of, I think this is their more premium uh, cummerbund here. So uh, I forget which buckles these are, whether they're Tactic or Rock, I can't remember. But they're not tubes. Uh, they're the, the short throw vertical tubes. So they're, they're kind of the happy middle ground. Uh, it doesn't take much uh, depth to disconnect those. Only about a half inch or so. Uh, so they kind of, they serve the same purpose as the ones that require no vertical throw and just separate side to side. Uh, you've got your, your front mounting here with uh, the back having a little bit more surface area than the front, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you're lifting your placard, odds are this will stay and on the, the plate carrier itself instead of the placard. Uh, and then you've got a full molly field on both sides, or I'm sorry, 
on the exterior. Um, interior has a stretch uh, pocket here. I had it opened up and it closed on me. I apologize. There's really good uh, Velcro continuity there. It's not going to open up accidentally on you. I think you could put the uh, cry armor panels in here because it's kind of bellowed on the, the bottoms here. Uh, so I think you could fit the six by nines in there. The, uh, the front portion here, the Velcro is not sewn straight to this. So there's a little lip in there that you could work the, the armor under if you wanted that in there. And I think that would fit the six by nine panels just fine. Uh, or you could put some uh, Velcro inserts in there if that was more up your alley. I think you would have good luck with that. It's like an inch and a half strip of Velcro in there. So it would hold an insert just fine. Uh, just keep in mind, depending on how the insert is constructed, you might wear through this tweeve uh, with whatever you're, you're carrying in there. And then on the back end, it is still uh, Velcro, which is not my preferred mounting method for cummerbunds. But this has kind of a nice uh, stretch built into it where uh, it's reinforced with this ribbon here. Uh, so when you get to the, the extent of the stretch, it, it keeps you from destroying your elastic there uh, too much. But it's got, it's got a good bit of stretch in it, uh, and it's not overly weak. Uh, so it doesn't just immediately give you all of the stretch. Uh, looking at the quality on these things, the buckles are not my, not my preferred buckles. Uh, but I understand first sphere sometimes can be a little difficult to work with on getting tubes. Um, Mixed results. I have bought tubes uh, to have on hand without issue, uh, but other people tell me it's a nightmare. So uh, that's something to, to consider. Maybe it's just easier to source these in Europe, which is totally feasible. Uh, the stitching looks all right. This elastic, you can see when I when I pull on it, it's, uh, it's a little worn. I don't know if that shows up at all. Over here, I don't know if that's just through use or if it's a slightly lower grade elastic. It feels fine, uh, and if I hadn't stretched that out, I don't know if I would have noticed it. The, the laser cutting looks good. Uh, the materials all feel right. I didn't check it under night vision, just because, I don't know, that's a lot. Um, so if that's a concern, I don't know, plan, plan ahead and check it out. Uh, but if that's a concern for you, uh, probably just buy American made stuff would be the better option. Uh, other than that, all the materials feel good. Velcro feels good. Uh, stitching looks good. I didn't see any, any major concerns in here. We've got some bar tacking, some box stitching. Uh, I hit on it before on uh, some videos, but like the, the corners of the plate bags look well done. They're all finished edges and everything. I don't really, I don't have any complaints about this. Uh, having seen it, I feel more comfortable that if I see something from them that really catches my eye, I can jump on it without too much issue. Uh, I will say, I think they're on Mark IV now. Uh, they still offer some of the old versions. I don't know all of them. It's been a while since I checked their website. Uh, but So Mark II is Cry compatible, and I think they've gone back and forth throughout the different uh, versions. So Mark III might be proprietary, and then I think Mark IV, they went back to Cry pattern. Uh, but again, if you have any questions about that, obviously reach out to Direct Action. The owner of this did, and he got an answer, I think, within a day. So if you're if you're looking at the Spitfire, just give them a heads up. Say, hey, is the Mark IV or the Mark III cry compatible? I'm just curious, and they'll get you an answer. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is the, the Spitfire Mark II with uh, two cummerbunds. Hopefully you guys got something out of this and feel a little bit more comfortable dabbling with European gear. Thanks, guys.